welcome back to Tell Us Your English and also to Carnival Times. This is a space that goes to all the carnivals in the Caribbean and Latin American countries right now. I'm Gladys Quesada, I'm your host in this space, and right now I'm at a display and an exposition here in the National Carnival Commission in Savannah's Park in Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago. This display goes to all the history of the carnival, the steel fans, the queens and kings of the carnival, and more. But we will talk about that later. Right now, we go to Oruro in Bolivia. There, the mine workers are having a homage, a carnival homage to the deity that protects them underground. Let's see. It is midnight at the San Jose mine on the outskirts of the city of Oruro. A group of workers from the Corazon de Jesus Cooperative have been on vigil to pay tribute to the mine's uncle. What we give to the uncle of the mine is this. For what reason? Because day by day, thanks to him, this is what sustains us out here. So our retribution is through that. He is the owner of the veins. We ask him with all respect, day by day, that we do well, that he gives us good ore, good veins, with all respect. We are coming into your house so that you take care of us because in mining, you never know if you will go in and go out. A white table is offered with a kind of cookies made with starch and sugar, with the figures of what is asked for wealth, goods, have and Lama are offered, the heart of which is thrown into the holes where the uncle resides. At Carnival, it is the uncle's birthday. We give offerings from all the workers so that the uncle takes care of us in the mine. But also, the uncle will give them more ore. It has been our custom for years. Before Spanish colonialism, the indigenous people were farmers or hunters and were sheep dieters, the sun, the moon, the wind, and the hail. And they were forced to work as miners and accept the Catholic religion, their God, and saints. These natives, turned into miners, decided to make their own God and with the mud and clay from the mine, they made a small statue, but in human shape, just like the virgins and saints above, with the difference that they put a piece of pure mineral as the heart, and with that they made the image. In all the mines, there is the uncle, in different parts and sides, almost naked, he has exhibited his masculinity, he is invited to cigarettes which he consumes immediately, and also alcohol, and in his company alcohol is drunk and cigars are smoked as well. Miners leave him coca leaf, sweets, requests for welfare. The Spaniards and the Spanish church that was above said, the God you have below in the mine is not God, but the devil. At almost 4,000 meters above sea level, in the undercuts, conditions are extreme, with temperatures ranging from intense cold to heat up up to 40 degrees Celsius. Air is scarce and is piped in from the outside. Mining in these mines dates back more than 500 years, and they continue to produce lead, silver, and tin. Desde la ciudad de Oruro, Freddy Morales, Telesur, Bolivia. These pictures showcase not only the queens and kings of the carnival here in Trinidad and Tobago, they are also pictures of the crafting people, the common ones, who give the splendor of the sequins, the feathers, the colors, the customs, and the makeup. Yes, they make possible every edition of the carnival. And now we are going to other carnival in Latin American countries. This is the case of Colombia. In Barranquilla, Hernán Tovar brings us a story about how the people in Magdalena is showcasing their dance abilities and traditions. Let's see. In Barranquilla's pre-carnival, some places have been arranged to set the scene for this festival with famous figures of the local folklore, so the Malecon of the Magdalena River retains its importance also as a cultural and historical provider. 
It represents a lot because it was one of the most important ways for the other towns from the riverside towns to reach the Carnival of Barranquilla and I will be adopted as the Carnival Zone. The tradition and joy of the patrimonial dancers reaches this place with the Magdalena River as a witness and give account of the cultural and artistic history that retains the liberating deeds. The dance of the Paloteo is a warrior dance where we show that the sticks are the weapons that our soldiers took to fight. So instead of us taking weapons, we take some sticks in symbolism of the dance of the Paloteo. The indigenous bread dance is a tradition that has lasted from generation to generation for more than 60 years, and it has been spread in the memory of the indigenous communities that inhabit the Caribbean region, their dances and attire. I started to go to the Carnival of Barranquilla when I was seven years old, and my mom was the one who arrived in the city when the lady Dora Tomás Melendez came from Sinega Magdalena, because that dance was brought by the Sinega del Rosario on the sides of Mampos. Then, the lady wanted to take part in the carnival, but she didn't know how to do it. And my mother, as she was a woman from Barranquilla who liked the joy of folklore, her name was Marie Gomez, was the one who pushed for this to happen. All this as a preamble to the formal opening of the carnival that will bring the best of the folklore tradition of the Colombian Caribbean for four days in a row. Hernán Darío Tobargaitán, Telesur, Barranquilla, Colombia. Usually we think that the carnival just comes and goes, and then it's just it's celebration, the lights, the feathers, the dances, but the carnival is much more. It's also history, and it's also a social archive of what is happening in every country. In this case, we went to the Cambule, a celebration that mixes the carnival history and roots with the social issues of this island. Let's see. Just before carnival at 4 a.m. on Friday morning, a humble block in the center of Port of Spain and Piccadilly Greens becomes a stage. In spite of the darkness of the early morning, the audience crowds the bleacher steps. The streets become the stage, the actors wait for their moment. The play begins. This is the Cambule. <laughs> Members of the Ida Keda group follow the script written by Ento Pearl Springer and staged for the first time in 2004. Over the course of two decades, effects, contrasts, arrangements have been added, but the plot is the same. The slave uprising of 1881 against the mistreatment of the English masters, those who besides subjecting them to work without rest, deprive them of celebrating the carnival. On that remote date, also before the light of day, not a few died in order of to gain dignity. Their names, although unknown, are not forgotten. First, uh, firstly, we acknowledge that we are only here today celebrating Trinidad Carnival in the way that we celebrate our carnival with all of these lovely traditional forms because of the efforts of our ancestors. If those persons, those stick men, those jamets didn't fight, didn't stand up to the police and say, no, we want to celebrate in the way we want to celebrate, then all of this wouldn't have been. So it's about acknowledging that. Um, the relevance of doing it in the streets is in the street it happened. It's not just a play that was just thought of by somebody. It is, it is our own creative representation of a piece of history that actually happened. So the doing it in the street is part of the ritual of acknowledging all the blood that was shed for us to be able to have our carnival. Acknowledging all of the, the sweat that was shed, all of the tears, all of the fighting, all of the people who died for us to be able to have the carnival that we have today. The term cambule is a popular adaptation of the French phrase that means burnt canes because the beginning of the carnival coincided with the end of the sugar season when the cane fields were burnt to eliminate pests and clear the vegetable waste. This celebration derived in the black carnival with a humble origin. 
For this reason, there are no grandiloquences in the production that recreates it. Its values are centered in the typical customs that characterize the time, the live music with the African drums as fundamental base. Behind it, the theory and the academy. We do a lot of research on um, the time. So of course, because we are talking about people who didn't write their histories down, they, they're not very present in the history books and they're certainly not present in the newspapers of the time. And so we have to d dig into the oral histories, we have to dig into the songs of the time and that sort of thing. Dawn breaks in Port of Spain and with the daylight the play ends and now we'll go to schools and community centers. The actors said goodbye to the late night audience that then joins a small parade of typical carnival characters that are already a symbol of the Caribbean and Trinidadian identity. Characters that will accompany the carnival from beginning to end and then start again and wait for another morning of Cambule. For Telesur English, as a special envoy from Trinidad and Tobago, Gladys Quesada. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, the story goes like this. The white colonial masters banned the use of drums made of wood and other materials, so the slaves find alternatives in utensils from the kitchen and also this kind of containers that had an evolution and today they are one of the national symbols and also one of the authentic and native instruments. This is the steel pan. This is also one of the ways that percussion is done here in Trinidad and Tobago. Right now, let's explore about other traditions and other stories, but let's go to Pernambuco in Brazil. There, uh, there is a story about how the carnival is celebrated. Let's see. <laughs> On the edge of the sugar plantations, in the sleepy town of Paudalho, on the outskirts of Greater Recife, Pernambuco, one of Brazil's oldest frevo organizations, the Clube dos Lenhadores, or Lumberjack Club, prepares for its 117th carnival. O frevo é uma música muito é, sedutora. O clube carnavalesco ele trabalha com o frevo de rua quando sai às ruas, quando faz os bailes, e também ele compõe os próprios frevos, que são os seus hinos também. O hino de, do Lenhadores é, é um hino muito antigo, mais de 100 anos. Frevo is a genre of music normally only played during carnival, but has its roots in waltzes and polkas that were popular in the late 1800s, but considered too slow to dance to in carnival. Local musicians sped up the tempo and played the European influence pop melodies over Afro Brazilian dance rhythms. Antigamente a gente brincava mais livres, a gente tinha mais sentia mais protegido. Hoje a gente tem que ter cuidado no dia a dia com quem a gente está brincando, com quem a gente está do nosso lado, porque no mundo hoje tem muita maldade e aí hoje a gente brinca mais reservado. Mas não deixa de brincar não, viu? While carnivals in other regions of Brazil have been commodified to the point where only rich people can afford to get near the bands, Pernambuco's grand old frevo clubs like Lenhadores keep the tradition of carnival alive as a free festival made by and for the working class. Não é nós, não é nem a gente querer que ele não se acabe. É que o povo de Paudalho sente falta de alguma coisa. Pegaram se no Lenhadores. Você pode ver hoje aqui no nosso ensaio que é muita gente e que adora esse clube. Então, a gente nunca vai pensar que isso aqui vai se acabar. Brian Mir, Telesur, Paudalio Pernambuco. And like this, we say goodbye for now to these carnival times. But before we bid our farewells, we want to thank to the National Carnival Commission here in Trinidad and Tobago, and also to their archives and experts that put this display on and allow us to do this show from here. So with this, we are saying goodbye. I'm Gladys Quesada. Remember to follow us in our socials, and please stay tuned for another Carnival Times. <laughs>